Remember, we're getting up early again tomorrow. Let's rest up. Ugh, give me a break. Ain't you having fun? It's a royal pain. I haven't gotten out in a few hundred years. Whoa, a few hundred years? So, you were at Rayfalk that whole entire time? Yeah, waiting for my brother to return. Didn't you guys live together? My brother's adventure crazy, like a certain someone I know. He's always been traveling around. He always treated me like a kid and left me behind. He'd at least try to make it up to me by bringing back souvenirs. What sort of things would he bring you? Oh, you know, some old artifact type of stuff he found in the ruins. A cutesy sort of ribbon, weird charms, stuff like that. I warned him not to, but, you know. Hey, sounds pretty nice. So you'd think so too, huh? I see. Was your brother like Saray? Maybe. But it's all in the past now. Not quite. Hey, Zavid, I want to ask you about something you mentioned. Oh, hmm. Is this your response to my love confession? Don't try and weasel your way out of this. You said there was something you had to settle with my brother. That's all there is to it, really. There's just something between us we need to settle. And that something is? I told him, please, let me marry your little sister, and he punched me. Don't lie. Oh, come on, he'd totally do something like that. Fine, don't tell me then. <laughs> no wonder he's worried about her all the time. So what's this really about? Did Edna's brother ask a favor from you or something like that? Hmm? Who wants to know? Does it have something to do with the oath? Nah, it's not that big of a deal. But even so, a promise between men is just as sacred. Can't believe we really beat the dragon. Pretty impressive. That's why you the man, Saray. I know. It's about Edna's brother, isn't it? You might have noticed that already, but if we shoot Eisen with Siegfried... We might be able to get rid of the malevolence and return him to normal. It's still only a possibility. We may need more than one bullet. And who knows if this will even work. Yeah. I know that now's not the time. Sorry. Maybe I said too much. But if we scour the world, we might be able to find another way. Yeah. But Heldolf ain't gonna wait for us. This could be our only chance. I'm not forcing it, you know. Because you'll do it yourself anyways, right? You bet I will. We did what we could. I know it wasn't much. Yeah. You did the right thing, Saray. Don't be so hard on yourself. I'll be fine. Don't worry. I'm sure he's satisfied with the outcome. And you? Me too. But Edna probably needs some time. Indeed. She's bottled it up for hundreds of years now. Edna may be a crybaby, but her mind's as bright as a diamond. Did Eisen say that? We've seen for ourselves, though, right? Yeah, you're right. Saray, can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah, is something wrong? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. I see. Does that mean she doesn't even want to see us? If that's what she wants, then I'll do as she says. Don't get the wrong idea. I just have my reasons. Her eyes are probably as sore as they get. No doubt. She's been crying for a while. Well, if you say so. That ain't no good. You gotta notice a lady's charms, even if she's not looking. Shut up, Grandpa Zavid. A.K.A. Gramp Feed. <laughs> so you're back to normal, huh? But hey, that hurts. <laughs> so, what did you want to talk about? The time is right. And so while it still is, there's something I want to tell you all. I'm only going to say it once. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, didn't you just say it twice? That second one's probably from Eisen. Ain't that right, bud? How saddening. Lila, is there any way to... Well, I... Saray, you're troubling Lila. I'm sorry. No, please don't mind. If only I was stronger. Don't be so arrogant. Is it your right to say who lives and who dies? Guess I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Save your sympathy. Yeah, 
Boris accomplished what he needed to do, of his own accord. We should do our best as well. Yeah. We'll just keep on doing whatever we can. I think I understand where I got that weird feeling from. I couldn't sense any murderous intent behind this incident. Didn't that priest refer to killing as purifying? Guess he's dedicated to his cause. He really believes he's saving the world. And that's exactly why he had neither built up malevolence nor became a hellion. That's more disturbing than anything. How could his sense of righteousness become so distorted? Didn't he say that a seraph showed him the way in his dreams? That's probably what caused this. Something so formless. Something formless? Like an illusion? <sighs> Maybe Misty is behind all this. Even if Simone did have a hand in it, that's not enough to make him atone for what he's done. No matter what the reason, killing is a sin. For him to be able to kill without even realizing that means... He's just like a monster. Weak ones, crazy ones, strong ones. There's all kinds of types out there. Yes, but there are people like Sergei as well. Yeah, I know. Rose. It still seems like you haven't quite told Sergei the truth, have you? Yeah, kind of. I guess I don't want to disappoint him. Yeah, me neither. Maybe for Sergei, people like you and Rose are symbolic of the very world he wants to protect. Maybe he's reflecting upon the loss of his family through them. We are deceiving him, but let's keep it on the down low for a bit longer. Yes, I agree. Maybe you guys should make it a reality instead. <laughs> In, In your, your dreams! dreams. See? What a cute couple. Anyway, let's do what we have to do. And then... A day will come when we can tell him the truth. For sure. Being a princess sure sounds rough. Nations and politics are like an entwined spiderweb full of people's desires. If you are too full of ideals, you'll be entangled in the web instantly. But still, I don't want to say that Alicia is completely wrong. Especially since we know the reason why she's been working so hard. In times like these, Alicia's straightforwardness is a truly valuable asset. However, a sword that is too hard can break easily. True. And besides, Alicia does make sound arguments. Isn't that a good thing? It's like, you know how if someone pointed out your wrongdoings, it really hits you? You'd probably get discouraged or even snap. They're only human after all. Meaning that by pushing her sharp reasoning on others, it causes cognitive dissonance and turns people against her. So that's it. Even though she's right, she's met with hostility. And she faces her challengers straight on, which in turn only brings forth even more hostility. So that's why she worries so. <sighs> what a pain. I'm sure it's tough on her. However, I don't think Alicia's feelings are completely misguided. Though we may need to assess the situation to know for sure. Alicia isn't the only one. I need to see for myself as well. Being a princess sure sounds rough. Nations and politics are like an entwined spiderweb full of people's desires. If you are too full of ideals, you'll be entangled in the web instantly. But still, I don't want to say that Alicia is completely wrong. Especially since we know the reason why she's been working so hard. In times like these, Alicia's straightforwardness is a truly valuable asset. However, a sword that is too hard can break easily. True. And besides, Alicia does make sound arguments. Isn't that a good thing? It's like, you know how if someone pointed out your wrongdoings, it really hits you? You'd probably get discouraged or even snap. They're only human, after all. Meaning that by pushing her sharp reasoning on others, it causes cognitive dissonance and turns people against her. So that's it. Even though she's right, she's met with hostility. And she faces her challengers straight on, which in turn only brings forth even more hostility. So that's why she worries so. Sounds like quite a load the princess has to carry. I'm sure it's tough on her. However, I don't think Alicia's feelings are completely misguided. Though we may need to assess the situation to know for sure. Alicia isn't the only one. I need to see for myself as well. Are we not able to tell Alicia the truth about Maltran? 
Because we can't actually believe in Alicia, even when we really want to? Uh, she's just trying to provoke you. <sighs> Let's keep it a secret. Are you sure? Yeah, I agree. It appears harming Alicia is not part of her grand plan anyways. Then I have no objections. Rose, you agree too, right? You sure told her off. <laughs> Saray looked like he was done with her, so I just took it from there after she started talking smack. <laughs> to be honest, I'm scared to tell Alicia the truth about her master. Alicia really trusts Maltran, more than any one of us can imagine. Do whatever you want. But if you do face off with her, don't hold back. Otherwise, you'll die. Yeah, I know. Don't get so serious. It'll be fine. Come on, stay psyched up. Right. Are we not able to tell Alicia the truth about Maltran? Because we can't actually believe in Alicia, even when we really want to? Uh, she's just trying to provoke you. <sighs> Let's keep it a secret. Are you sure? Yeah, I agree. It appears harming Alicia is not part of her grand plan anyways. Then I have no objections. Rose, you agree too, right? You sure told her off. <laughs> Saray looked like he was done with her, so I just took it from there after she started talking smack. To be honest, I'm scared to tell Alicia the truth about her master. Alicia really trusts Maltran, more than any one of us can imagine. Ain't nothing out of the ordinary for Hellions to be living among humans these days. Well, anyways, I got a feeling we'll meet that babe again. Yeah, I know. Don't get so serious. It'll be fine. Come on, stay psyched up. Right. Alicia sure seems different. Yeah, she's matured as a woman for sure. I believe it's because she's grown so resolute in what she must do to realize her dreams. And that probably inspired her to become a politician. Yeah. Lonely without her? No way. I believe in her. Alicia will be just fine. Guess you've matured a bit yourself. Well, you know. Whoa <laughs> now. Uh-huh. You scatter bones sure are on the same wavelength. You think? Well, we are kind of like family. Family, huh? I wanted to ask you if someone named Brad was your father. You mean our late leader? He's the one who saved me. Oh, really? Apparently, I was lost and roaming around the northern battlefield when he found me. Just like me. Seraphim don't have parents either. You guys too, huh? But we do know what it means to have a family. Gramps was the one who raised both of us. Same here. My friends in the Scattered Bones are like family to me, who took the same path I did. You don't mind having to be an assassin? No way! I'm grateful for it. It's better than us all being apart. I see. You scatter bones sure are on the same wavelength. You think? Well, we are kind of like family. Family, huh? I wanted to ask you if someone named Brad was your father. You mean our late leader? He's the one who saved me. Oh, really? Apparently, I was lost and roaming around the northern battlefield when he found me. Just like me. Seraphim don't have parents either. You guys too, huh? But we do know what it means to have a family. Gramps was the one who raised both of us. Same here. My friends in the Scattered Bones are like family to me, who took the same path I did. You don't mind having to be an assassin? No way! I'm grateful for it. It's better than us all being apart. I see. So, she doesn't mind, huh? See? I told you the Mabo curry bun would be a huge hit. Mmm, yeah, it's delicious. Hey, mind your manners, you two. But we gotta eat it before it gets cold. Yeah, that'd be gross. I can't take it anymore. Give me a bite. Yeah, sharing is caring. Your manners, everyone, please. You, you want, want some, some too? too? Yes, please. Oh. See, I told you the Mabo curry bun would be a huge hit. Mmm, yeah, it's delicious. Hey, mind your manners, you two. But we gotta eat it before it gets cold. Yeah, that'd be gross. I can't take it anymore. Give me a bite. Yeah, sharing is caring. I want like ten bites. Your manners, everyone, please. 
You want some too? Yes, please. Oh. Are you really going to take on his request? Yeah. I mean, I kind of already did. Huh. Are you sure this is okay? I hate to sound harsh, but those children were accomplices in a crime. Yeah. Meaning in this case, the mercenaries punished the group of thieves who caused them all this trouble. But, I mean, those kids were just trying to survive. They knew they were doing a bad thing, and they were trying to break free of that vicious cycle. Someone took advantage of that and murdered them. What those kids did was wrong. But even so, the one who betrayed them was just as wrong. Maybe, but... Sorry. I don't know the right answer to this. I'm not blaming you. Sorry if I made you feel that way. And it's not like it's just their problem. Huh? Just don't worry about it. Seriously. I'll totally do the detective work. If it's a Hellion thing, it's all you. All right. Let's find out who's behind it all first. You got it. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. I should ask Agil to look after these kids. Oh, yeah. I had one more thing to say. Thanks, Saray. Huh? For what? For not wanting me to have to keep on killing. I don't regret what I do, but I'm glad you worry for me. I do understand your resolve as the leader of the Scattered Bones. But that doesn't change how I feel about it. Stubborn as ever. Look who's talking. Well, glad we're not enemies. And I'm glad that you're my squire. Lila, how did you know Gramps? Is Zenris his real name? Yep. No one calls him that in Alicia, though. I've met him before. Just once. Weren't you guys having some sort of serious conversation? What was that? A cheeky champ chuck cheap chocolate chips in the cheap chocolate chip shop. This again? Since when did you know that Saray and Mikleo were the old man's family? Red leather, blue leather, yellow leather. Red leather, blue leather, yellow leather. Come on, just tell us. I don't need to know. Gramps wouldn't do anything to harm us. I'm sure. But if we did something wrong, there'd be no telling how much hell we'd catch. So you trust him? Yep. As much as I trust Lila. Weren't they just talking about us? Looks like it. Why don't we ask? Mikleo. I guess we shouldn't eavesdrop on their conversation. If Gramps has something to tell us, he'll tell us straight up. Yeah. Same with Lila. Saray, isn't that... I, Zenris, shall record the truth regarding the birth of the human Saray and the Seraph Miklio here in writing. That's Gramps' handwriting. Both Saray and Miklio are survivors of Camlon, the, the origin, origin village, village where the age of chaos unfolded. Miklio's mother is Muse, the younger sister of the late shepherd, Michael. Saray's mother is Selene, a citizen of Camlon. I have been entrusted to the care of both of them by Muse, who managed to escape from Camlon. I closed off Elysia with my domain, and decided to raise both of them in an isolated place, separate from the outside world. As long as I live, I swear to protect these young babes as part of our family. It's the same memory that Maven showed me. Yeah. So that would make it right after Mautelis became a Hellion. Lila, isn't that around the same time that you first met Zenris? I see. So that would mean Gramps told her of the incident in Camlon and the start of the Age of Chaos. And so she earned the power to purify through the Oath and waited until the Shepherd appeared. I didn't know of their names back then. Is there anything else mentioned in there, Saray? I pray that these children, burdened with the tribulations of the era, shall still live in peace. But if... Saray? But if these children, children should challenge, challenge their, their fate, fate and, and desire to create a new world, world then may, may they receive the blessings of both humans and seraphim them alike, so that, so that their, their will, will for a new future may, may be fulfilled. fulfilled. So Gramps knew all along. He did. This must be a dragon skeleton! 
If we study it, we may be able to understand the essence of the dragon itself. I bet even if you two were eating chicken wings, you'd find something nerdy to talk about. Actually, bird wings and animal legs are strikingly alike. It might be because... Ah, uh, here it goes. Idiot. But the real question is how an immortal dragon died. And a quadruped as well. The strongest type. There must be someone who defeated it. Or maybe there was someone. <sighs> oh, need me to hold your hand? No, there's something wrong with the Earth Pulse. Whoa, a serious response. You know something, don't you? It used to be a nest for the eight serpents, long, long ago. But you're still going, right? No matter what? Yeah. Be on alert, everyone. I will. Wouldn't want you to be studying my bones someday. I never imagined I'd be battling dragons. There are similar structures around here. I'm sure there's more of them. This place really is a dragon's nest. But it looks like they were captured here. So it's kind of like a roach motel, but for dragons. If they can be captured, they could be killed just as easily. Why keep them alive? Hmm. Maybe they were planning to use them somehow? I don't suppose they were trying to domesticate them? That's it! They're keeping them like cattle! It's like a farm raising cows to milk them. It's really similar to a farm. Aha! Uh -huh. There's only one thing they could be trying to harvest from dragons. Malevolence, huh? The spell in the ruins seems to be connected as one, like a circuit of sorts. So this whole place is just a circuit to conduct malevolence? We'd have to test that hypothesis to be sure. So what was the ruin's purpose, anyway? Most likely, your hypothesis of a dragon farm is correct. There was a Seraph civilization which utilized dragons in the past. What were they after? And what was their relationship with humans like? I'm afraid their relationship wasn't an amicable one. Thought so. There were no signs of anyone having lived here. Even if they had the power to catch dragons, it must have been hard. <sighs> The era shapes the people, I suppose. Huh. So Mr. Shepard and Mick Boy have learned about humans and Seraphim through the ruins. That's how they've always been. Are you seriously just now realizing that? Well, excuse me! No. I haven't understood the true meaning of it until now. I realized after embarking on this journey and visiting many other ruins. Ruins are the embodiment of the collective efforts of mankind. I feel the same way, too. Then this journey wasn't a waste after all. Isn't it too early to say that? Yeah. We haven't found what we're looking for yet. A ruin that leads to our dreams. We'll find it someday, for sure. <sighs> What's wrong, Edna? The Earth Pulse is activating. Huh? What do you mean? The Earth is increasing its power. Which means that Mautelis is getting stronger, too. And so is held off, huh? But why so suddenly? Or maybe it's not activating, but returning to normal. The malevolence we saw on Hexen Isle was enough to distort time and space. I see. And if that has strained the Earth and restricted the flow of the Earth Pulse? Then we're the cause for stopping it. I'm so sorry. I should have noticed earlier. Saray and Rose would have done it anyways. That's how they are. So you say. It means they've grown stronger, as have I. It's the decision they made. No sense in regretting it. You're right. I want to grow stronger, too. Not a lot of clues to her whereabouts. We know something bad happened. Maybe Cindra and Margaret had already known each other from before. So you think Margaret had such strong resonance that she could talk to Seraphim? Yeah. It's like they were once friends, but... Something happened. Yeah. All the more reason we need to find and talk with Margaret. A little girl can't have gone that far away. Let's look for her tomorrow around the city. Ah! A scream? Right outside! Not a lot of clues to her whereabouts. We know something bad happened. Maybe Cindra and Margaret had already known each other from before. So you think Margaret had such strong resonance that she could talk to Seraphim? Yeah, it's like they were once friends, but... Something happened. Yeah. 
all the more reason we need to find and talk with Margaret. A little girl can't have gone that far away. Let's look for her tomorrow around the city. Ah! A scream? Right outside! I've always thought that having resonance was a good thing, but I guess that's not always true. Once you can see with it, your world is never the same again. Depending on how you take it in, you could change for the worse. In the end, it is what you make of it. Everyone's got their own values. But different values bring conflict amongst the people. Humans and Seraphim effectively live in different worlds. No wonder it's hard to live in harmony with each other. It's the same for shepherds and humans. What's important is having the capacity to accept each other's differences. Right. We're separate beings in the end, after all. Besides, resonance has nothing to do with this anyways. Those bullies are at fault. So you're willing to accept us then, Rose? Well, if something is real, it's real. May as well be positive about it. That's pretty smart of you, especially considering you're Rose. Yeah, I told you not to talk inside my head! Why don't you just accept it? It's how we Seraphim are. Well, I think it's creepy. I'm entitled to my opinion. I've always thought that having resonance was a good thing, but I guess that's not always true. Once you can see with it, your world is never the same again. Depending on how you take it in, you could change for the worse. In the end, it is what you make of it. Everyone's got their own values, but different values bring conflict amongst the people. Humans and Seraphim effectively live in different worlds. No wonder it's hard to live in harmony with each other. It's the same for shepherds and humans. What's important is having the capacity to accept each other's differences. Right. We're separate beings in the end, after all. Besides, resonance has nothing to do with this anyways. Those bullies are at fault. I've always thought that having resonance was a good thing, but I guess that's not always true. Once you can see with it, your world is never the same again. Depending on how you take it in, you could change for the worse. It's all up to the user whether they use it for good or evil. Everyone's got their own values, but different values bring conflict amongst the people. Humans and Seraphim effectively live in different worlds. No wonder it's hard to live in harmony with each other. It's the same for shepherds and humans. What's important is having the capacity to accept each other's differences. Right. We're separate beings in the end, after all. Besides, resonance has nothing to do with this anyways. Those bullies are at fault. Saray, you're not going to sleep yet? Yeah, I want to take a look around the city. It's so quiet that I can feel the gravity of the city's history. Fitting for an ancient capital born from the height of the era of Asgard. It's kind of dawning on me. The things we read about in books actually exist. Ah, uh, what a poem this would make if we were travelers of old. A poem? Ah, Pendrago, where the evening lights are blinding sights. Come on. Okay, it wasn't great, but I gotta start somewhere, right? <laughs> what the? What was that? Quit it, Mikleo. It wasn't me. Let's check outside. Morgrim sure is the cat's me. I mean, quite a person. Yeah, even though she looks so fat, I mean, proportionate. Malevolence, prayer. Enshrinement? Giving the blessing? We Seraphim ought to reconsider how we interact with humans, like Morgrim has. We humans should do the same for Seraphim. I think making that effort is the first step for peaceful coexistence, both for the Seraphim and humans. But even Morgrim became a Hellion. Reality is cruel. Yeah, so are you. Let's not get too idealistic just yet, though, huh? Right. There was so much malevolence in Pendrago that even Morgrim couldn't handle it by herself. We can't ignore that fact. Maybe there's a reason why. A reason that might have something to do with the overflowing malevolence. You may be right. We shouldn't leave it all to Morgrim, and be sure to check up on her once in a while. Yeah. Hold it! Isn't this place a tomb? Am I gonna get cursed or something? Don't worry. We'll all be punished together. Though we'll be sure to let you go first. No, thank you! Hey, it's disrespectful to talk loudly in the ruins. There goes the second biggest ruin, Geek. More like Mebo, Geek times two. 
What's that supposed to mean? Be quiet. It's disrespectful. It's your fault. Hey, Miklio's getting pretty angry, even though Saray's not really involved. <laughs> He's not angry. Just overreacting, says Saray. Ugh, this really grinds my gears. Hold it. Isn't this place a tomb? Am I going to get cursed or something? Don't worry. We'll all be punished together. Though we'll be sure to let you go first. No, thank you! Hey, it's disrespectful to talk loudly in the ruins. There goes the second biggest ruin geek. More like Mebo, geek times two. What's that supposed to mean? Be quiet. It's disrespectful. It's your fault! Hey, Miklio's getting pretty angry, even though Saray's not really involved. <laughs> He's not angry. Just overreacting. Coming from you? Wow. Ugh, this really grinds my gears. Hmm. I guess it's difficult to decrease the price of something when it's already gotten so high. It does feel like the merchants are rather merciless on the pricing, but it's not like they've been affected by malevolence. Right. So I guess even returning the blessing won't solve everything. A blessing alone can't change the hearts of people. It's all so complicated. At least the people of Logren haven't given up on restoring their village. Either way, the shepherds shouldn't get involved. Yeah, this is where the merchants come in. I'm sick of this Norman collecting already. How is that possible? Everyone knows you love him. You've even got one on your umbrella. Rose, better not to mention the mascot. It gets long. I love long stories. Go ahead, lay it on us. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. This little guy here? You can pull out his head to stretch out his neck, like a giraffe. That's what you meant by it gets long? Same goes for the nose, too. Max length, 1.5 times its height. Ew, that's not even a Norman anymore. That's right. This thing's like a talisman, an amulet, a rabbit's foot, a periapt, that sort of thing. I don't quite get it, but sure. A charm you carry because it's special to you, right? Not really. It was given to me, so I put it on. That's a whole bunch of Norman we found. Yes, an abnormal amount. But I gotta say, their abilities really are helpful. Why does everyone leave them alone? Yeah, you'd think there would be droves of Seraphim asking for their help. Long ago, there was in fact an enormous demand for them. They were booked up for months at a time. So why are they just wandering around now? One day their leader, well, their leader-ish person, rose up against the extreme work conditions. Demanding autonomy for Norman Seraphim, plus a significant raise in wages. He called on the other Norman to join the fight for independence. A Norman revolt? Were there many casualties? None. The only one pushing for independence was the leader-ish fellow. The others were simply like... We don't mind helping, but it'd be real sweet if we could get maybe a 300-year break between crunch time. And that was more or less that. So easy going. But that's Norman for you. And what happened to the leader? Well, that's a whole nother... After a protracted battle with another Seraph, he lost and was never seen again. Or so the story goes. Huh. So Norman have their own history, too. Lila, I get... But you sure know a lot about Norman, Edna. You really must like them a whole... I just hear rumors, that's all. Hey, Seraphim grant blessings and good fortune, right? What kind of good fortune would you guys bring? Hmm, mine would probably be something like academic achievement. Let me guess, Lila would be family safety and security? <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> I suppose I'd be perfect health. You? Really? That'd be odd. Not really. I've been hit by lightning on multiple occasions. Tumbled off the peak of Rayfalk, gotten caught in an enormous landslide. Stubbed my pinky toe on the edge of the dresser, gotten a tiny fishbone stuck in my throat. And yet, here I am, safe and sound. Holy crap! Well, okay, some of that was just regular crap, but still, whoa! You really are lucky, Edna. To a bizarre extent, even. But it's how I survived being near my brother, even after he had turned into a dragon. <sighs> hey, 
Seraphim grant blessings and good fortune, right? What kind of good fortune would you guys bring? Hmm, mine would probably be something like academic achievement. Let me guess, Lila would be family safety and security? <laughs> Quite possibly. Mine would probably be lucky in love, by which I mean a pretty lady'd fall in love and I'd get lucky. I suppose I'd be perfect health. You? Really? That'd be odd. Not really. I've been hit by lightning on multiple occasions. Tumbled off the peak of Rayfalk, gotten caught in an enormous landslide. Stubbed my pinky toe on the edge of the dresser, gotten a tiny fishbone stuck in my throat. And yet, here I am, safe and sound. Holy crap! Well, okay, some of that was just regular crap, but still, whoa! You really are lucky, Edna. To a bizarre extent, even. But it's how I survived being near my brother, even after he had turned into a dragon. <sighs> Though I'm not sure it was entirely blind luck. Attention, everyone. Uh, what's up? I found this. A letter? This will be a short missive. The time for alliance grows nigh. I would judge your true strength. I shall await you in the far depths of Igraine, the Shrine of the Fire Trial. I will not blame you if you turn and run, but know that I shall judge you to be cowards. What the, huh? It's a summons. They want us to go to the Fire Trial Shrine. Sounds like someone wants to pick a fight with us. Who? Seriously? I'm curious about the time for Alliance bit. You are? A lady's intuition, is it? If that's what you want to call it. Well, all right then. Why don't we check it out? You knew, didn't you, Edna? That Phoenix the mascot was a real Norman in disguise? Pretty much. Sometimes I'd pretend to look one way, and when I suddenly turned around, our eyes would meet. Just for a split second, and then he'd look away again. Yuck! That sounds super creepy! More like super irritating. It was like I had a stalker. Is that why you hung him upside down? You do understand that Phoenix was only being loyal to his sense of duty. Of course. Trust me, I know way worse methods of torture. You should know that Phoenix asked me to pass a message on to you. Edna, you have grown up to be a fine woman. Spread your wings. Your possibilities are limitless. End quote. Dude, that's so patronizing. Or it would be if it made any sense at all. He's a very, um, passionate person. He's just slow sometimes to pick up on signs. I do feel I can soar higher than before. Now that my umbrella is lighter. Hey, there's a little phoenix on your umbrella, Edna. Don't worry, it's just a plushie this time. How did you get this? It's a little keepsake that Phoenix left me, along with this letter. What does it say? For days upon days, I have toiled to make this plushie for you. If you're ever lonely, think of this as me, and it shall absolve your loneliness. Although I may not be with you now, do not worry. I am the Phoenix. Whenever you need me, I am there in your heart. Phoenix is such a pain, always talking and talking and getting up in my business. But you're using the gift anyways? Only because my umbrella feels off balance and weird without it. I have a delicate side, you know. Uh-huh. You sure do. Saray, when you said they're opposites... Boy, are you thick. Thick, Leo. Hey, I was gonna say you meant her and Alicia, if you'd let me finish. Forget it. The moment is over. Mickly over. How did my life get to this point? It's not a bad thing for them to contrast with each other, just... They've been striving for the same goal, even though their motivations and circumstances are different. Right. Alicia chose to carry out her duty as royalty, even though it hasn't been going as well as she'd hoped. While Maltran never wanted to be a knight, but nevertheless, she's achieved great deeds and earned the respect of the people. In each case, things haven't gone entirely as planned. Perhaps both of them feel that way. I didn't know Maltran's fame even extended into Rollins. That's how grand her achievements are. Well, that and she kind of sticks out, don't you think? Agreed. Her and her pupil alike. <laughs> They're totally cut from the same cloth. Huh? You mean Alicia and Maltran? 
We were thinking they were polar opposites. Seriously? I've seen them both every now and then when I've been at the palace, but they're both so like... Crap, how can I put it? Uptight? Fervent? Committed? I can kind of get that. Right? That's why it all clicked when I found out they were teacher and student. We always hurt the ones we love the most. Huh? We do? Why? No reason. It just popped into my head. <sighs> so Maltran's fellow knights turned into Hellions and attacked her. Were they jealous of her fame and exploits? People tend to resent those who excel, even if they may be allies. That's even how military officers lose their lives on the battlefield sometimes. That's just brutal. But Maltran is alive, right? I wonder what did happen. So Maltran's fellow knights turned into Hellions and attacked her. Were they jealous of her fame and exploits? People tend to resent those who excel, even if they may be allies. That's even how military officers lose their lives on the battlefield sometimes. That's just brutal. But Maltran is alive, right? I wonder what did happen. That might have been the moment she herself turned Hellion. Or she could have been one from the start. We don't know the exact source of her malevolence, but we do know she has extraordinary combat skills. Indeed. It could be that the malevolence she emitted intensified that of the surrounding area, causing her fellow soldiers to become Hellions. It's a chicken and egg scenario. Won't do any good to ponder it. Either way, Maltran was already a Hellion when she first met Alicia. I imagine it will be hard on Alicia when she finds out. Sheesh, letter from Debbie. She wants her downers back. Come on! That means Alicia spent all those months next to a super grody Hellion, and yet she didn't absorb a lick of malevolence. How awesome is she? That's right. We gotta think positively. Damn straight. Chicken, egg, it's all the same once you've gobbled it down. I... I think that's still positive. Saray, you were thinking about the Cardinal, weren't you? Just for a moment. If you're still unsure about it, why don't you go relax at an inn somewhere? I can make the problem go away. What are you saying? You can't purify Hellions on your own. But I can kill. But that's... Saray, if you hesitate, the enemy will pounce on your moment of weakness. I don't want any of us to wind up getting hurt by sympathizing with the enemy. Are you saying that I'm holding the team back? Yep. Wait, Rose, Saray's just... Miklio, not now. I won't have second thoughts anymore. Well, I'm not saying not to have them. But if you're gonna do it, then stick to it. Yeah. Man, I didn't need to be so worried about them. I feel like an idiot. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, you're not like an idiot. That's, That's not, not what, what she I meant. meant. Saray, you were thinking about the Cardinal, weren't you? Just for a moment. If you're still unsure about it, why don't you go relax at an inn somewhere? I can make the problem go away. What are you saying? You can't purify Hellions on your own. But I can kill. But that's... Saray, if you hesitate, the enemy will pounce on your moment of weakness. Hasn't Zavid been saying the same thing? I don't want any of us to wind up getting hurt by sympathizing with the enemy. Are you saying that I'm holding the team back? Yep. Wait, Rose, Saray's just... Miklio, not now. I won't have second thoughts anymore. Well, I'm not saying not to have them. But if you're gonna do it, then stick to it. Yeah. Man, I didn't need to be so worried about them. I feel like an idiot. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, you're not like an idiot. That's, That's not, not what, what she meant. meant. I can't believe it. Both of the Medusa-type Hellions are... They're probably Cardinal Fortin's sisters. Are you sure? It seems like too much of a coincidence. Well, the only way to learn the truth is to ask the Hellions themselves. But how? If we're right, then I'm guessing they've gone back to their hometown. A gut feeling? Sort of, yeah. Just a hunch based on how humans think. Well, it's not impossible, psychologically speaking. <laughs> Halfway logic is better than no logic at all. And Rose's gut hasn't led us astray yet. But we can't go there right now. Glavin Basin is currently closed off. So, we'll have to sit tight and wait for an opportunity, huh? I can't believe it. Both of the Medusa-type Hellions are... 
They're probably Cardinal Fortin's sisters. Are you sure? It seems like too much of a coincidence. Well, the only way to learn the truth is to ask the Hellions themselves. But how? If we're right, then I'm guessing they've gone back to their hometown. A gut feeling? Sort of, yeah. Just a hunch based on how humans think. Well, it's not impossible, psychologically speaking. <laughs> Halfway logic is better than no logic at all. And Rose's gut hasn't led us astray yet. Fortin's located past Glaven Basin. Why don't we pay it a visit? Sounds good. It's just such a pity. Was it fate that the Cardinal and her sisters all had to choose between death and a life that would turn them into Hellions? Well... There is such a thing as destiny in this world. But I don't want to believe that everything that happens is predetermined. I've never really put much stock in destiny. Everyone lives on the razor's edge between light and darkness. You never know which way they'll fall. It just so happened that all three sisters fell on the side of darkness and became Hellions. That's all. Can you choose which side you fall on? Um, yeah. It's your own life, after all. Saray. Yeah. Rose has the right idea. Hmm. <laughs> Bunch of hopeless delinquents. Those street kids in Lady Lake. Well, if societies abandon them, I don't know. Is there any other way for them to survive besides a life of crime? It is a sad era we live in. Give me a break. If you have to do wrong to trudge onward, you do so knowing the burden of that wrong. You hide that dark shadow within yourself and keep pressing on. Those kids weren't like that. They just went astray. Hey, don't look at me when you say that. Rose, so those are the things you have to think about, huh? I don't think, I just do. Ugh, let's stop talking about this. You mean you're just spontaneous? That's... awesome. Yes. No matter the circumstances, it's up to each person to decide how she wants to live her life and for what she must be held accountable. But Rose understands that instinctively, without thinking. Very impressive. Seriously, can we change the subject? Maybe the experience of abandonment will get those kids to realize the importance of responsibility. Thanks to you guys pointing them in the right direction. I hope so. Yeah. If it were that easy, the Age of Chaos would be over already. <sighs> but man, those brats in Lady Lake. Are all the kids that bad these days? Well, if societies abandon them, I don't know. Is there any other way for them to survive besides a life of crime? It is a sad era we live in. That has nothing to do with it. Those delinquents were kicking sand in the face of those of us honestly struggling through life. They're just ignorant of the real world, don't you think? Hey, don't look at me when you say that. Rose, so those are the things you have to think about, huh? I don't think, I just do. Ugh, let's stop talking about this. You mean you're just spontaneous? That's... awesome. Yes. No matter the circumstances, it's up to each person to decide how she wants to live her life and for what she must be held accountable. But Rose understands that instinctively, without thinking. Very impressive. Seriously, can we change the subject? Maybe the experience of abandonment will get those kids to realize the importance of responsibility. Thanks to you guys pointing them in the right direction. I hope so. Yeah. If it were that easy, the Age of Chaos would be over already. <sighs> hmm. I should learn to ski. Huh? Why? Because hell froze over when you started using your head. It's okay, Rose. It's hard at first if you're not used to it. <laughs> Very funny. So that's what you think of me. <laughs> so, Rose. What was on your mind? Well, you know, we've beaten a whole bunch of Hellions. Those big old boss-type suckers. But I feel like I'm... Mm, missing something. Is it that you want to become stronger? More like... something that'll clinch the battle. I don't know if that's necessary. You're already plenty strong, Rose. <laughs> that's something only people who've lived on the battlefield will understand. That feeling when you know what you have to do but you lack the confidence and the strength you'll need to do it. Knowing what you have to do. 
and getting confidence in your strength. Hmm. Rose, the desire for strength is one that can very easily breed malevolence. <sighs> Rose, like I said earlier, you don't have to do anything you're not used to. Remember back in the Tintagel ruins? You listened to what I had to say and then searched your feelings to come up with your answer. Someone like you, you don't need to think, just feel. Right? Ha! <laughs> Our Mickey's actually pulled together some good advice. Chalk me up as another vote. Yeah, maybe it's time to go back to basics. Might as well. How about where we first met then? Lady Lake, wasn't it? Yeah, even before we met Lila. Wow, you do make a beeline for the lady folk. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Ah, I see I needn't have worried. But I'm glad you did. Thank you, Lila. Of course. And the seed of worry budded and bloomed into a beautiful flower. The end. You mean the whole thing with Rose's new move? But that lovely flower was about to get its petals munched off by the worry worm. Yes, all my mothering just made things more complicated. I won't do it again. <laughs> but the occasional screw-up is one of your charming features, Professor Lila. Aww. If only Professor Zavid would screw up as rarely as Professor Lila. Oh, no! Called out by Professor Edna. Don't you think so, Professor Miklio? Wh what I'm not a professor. Professor Miklio, you already earned your honorary degree by being the first to discover Rose. That's something Rose decided herself, not me. Same as today. And again, I'm not a professor. But professor... I'm not a professor! Professor Edna, Professor Miklio is being uncooperative. How rude. We expected better, Professor Miklio. Yeah, Professor Miklio, clean up your act. Lila, I understand your concerns, and I'm honestly grateful you brought up the potential dangers back there. You all are far more experienced than the rest of us, and we owe you guys a lot for your guidance. Professor Miklio! Professor Miklio's back! How rude, Professor Miklio. This'll teach me to ever say anything sincere again. Hmm? Huh. Lila? What's wrong? Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to wake you up. And? It looks like Lila's not here. I wonder if something happened. Hmm. She's probably okay. But... Even Lila probably has sides she'd rather not show to the rest of us. Hmm. Has she always gone off by herself when we've had rough times? I don't know. Probably. I didn't know. I don't think she wanted anyone to know. Just let her be. Oh my! Are you two up already? Lila! Are you okay? Huh? You were gone, and Saray was having a right old freak out. Oh, I was just taking a walk outside. Sorry for making you worry. You don't have to apologize. Holy mother of capitalism, I can barely watch this. You two are both so awkward. Huh? Saray, Lila isn't a little kid. And Lila, what exactly do friends mean to you? Huh? Why don't we revisit the fundamentals? It all started in this very city, right? Go back to that place where your memories are strongest. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> well, this is a pain. Iris gems really are beautiful. Too beautiful, more like it. That's why most people think they're just glass or some other kind of decoration. I see. What are they actually made of? It's not a natural mineral. They were most likely crafted through the use of multiple seraphic arts. Even so, it's practically unbelievable that there's something inside that lets you see the past. I wish you could watch anything from the past that you wanted. I'd watch a thousand years of history. Better hope you'd live a thousand years then, because that's how long it'd take. Oh, right. <laughs> that would be hard even for a seraph. Both iris gems and ruins are just fragments of the past. What's important is what you get out of them. Because history is the architect of our hearts. Whoa, Miklio! That was a sweet quote. You think so? I'm planning to put it in the book I write one day. Well, aren't you full of surprises? I mean, don't you think it'd be a waste not to pass on our tale to future generations? 
I would love to read your book, Miklio. I'll give you a copy. Signed, even. Darn. I gotta come up with my own quote and signature. <clears throat> Training, Miklio? Training? What do you mean? Never mind. But what a long way we've come. I never could have imagined it when we first started out. Do you remember that time when we first left Alicia? Of course. How could I forget how the world sparkled back then? I wonder how it would look to us now. Me too. Why don't we go back to Alicia and take a look? Yeah, let's go. You don't exactly look happy. I'm worried these two are pushing themselves too hard to believe the answer they've found. You mean about Aizen? Yes. Of course they're pushing too hard. Just because they've made their decision, it doesn't mean it's something they want to do. You're right. But you know, so it goes. The decision is made either way. Zavid. Zavid? You too? <sighs> The Shepherd and his buddies, all you guys, I actually respect you folks a whole bunch. You guys don't run from hard choices. You stand there and you see them through. Zavid. Shucks. Why am I even saying this kind of crap? I see. Yes. Yes, very much so. That's right. What's right? You don't get it, Mebo. You're still a little kid. Edna? Miklio, Zavid's not worried. He's... <clears throat> You're giving it away. Your homework today, Mickey boy. I don't get it. <laughs> Miklio, I'm sure you already noticed it long ago. Huh? Seriously, I have no clue what you're talking about. Don't you think Zavid was acting a bit weird earlier? It felt like he was hiding something from us. But he did say we were his comrades. Yeah, I think of him that way too. So do I. Then it's okay. We don't have to ask him. I trust that he'll tell us when the time is right. That's fair. Did that soothe your soul, gentle shepherd? Sorry. Thanks for lending an ear. No worries. I'll even give you a discount. Huh? It costs money? We restored the village's blessing, but Slenge is dying. It's gotta be due to the toxins produced from processing the vermilion ore. Most likely. And he must have known that from the start. He probably wanted this kind of punishment. Because he committed a crime, huh? If that's all true, then there's no need for the scattered bones to get involved. This must be the answer he arrived at. It may sound harsh, but there isn't anything more we can do about this situation. Still, it gets me royally ticked off at the church. And what seraph would tolerate their worship? If that Malfour guy came up with all this, I gotta hand it to him. Pretty good for someone who acts like a quirky bit part in a play. But he wasn't emitting any malevolence at all. What sort of person is he exactly? It's got me wondering, too. I think I'll have the scattered bones look into him. All right. It's settled down a bit. Nice. All purified? Somehow. I'm so sorry for making you go through this by yourself. Yeah, we had it real rough, too. Lila's been fortune-telling with her origami flower things. Saray won't lose, Saray will win. Saray won't lose, just like that. She left paper scraps all over. I had Mebo clean it up, though. Of course, I believed in you, but it was just so... Sorry for making you worry. Thanks, Lila. No, it's fine. My fortune-telling was right, after all. Good job, Miklio! Well, it wasn't too bad. No surprises. Exactly. No need for me to enter the ring. My manservant Mebo was enough to handle the problem. I work my butt off and that's the thanks I get? Oh, was it hard? It was hard, wasn't it? Sorry we asked too much of poor, feeble Mebo. Feebo. Fear not, dearly departed Feebo. Edna shall avenge you. Oh my gosh, you have a comeback for everything. For everything. Stop that! He's gotta know he's being played with. Why does he put up with it? He puts up with all sorts of things. He's just that kind of guy. Huh. I can see that. Miklio, you did it. No, I didn't! Wait, I mean... 
Huh? I think this place should be quelled for now. Are you okay, Lila? Yes, I'm fine. Better than us, probably. Your sparks were flying everywhere, and my dress nearly caught on fire. I'm sorry, I should have warned you. When you're around a fire, Seraph, you're in for no danger. <sighs> I set her up for that one, didn't I? Oh, like inferno danger. <laughs> you noticed. Oh, crap, why am I explaining your dumb jokes? <laughs> you're incredible, Lila. In, in more, more ways, ways than, than one. one. I think this place should be quelled for now. Are you okay, Lila? Yes, I'm fine. Better than us, probably. Your sparks were flying everywhere, and my dress nearly caught on fire. I'm sorry, I should have warned you. When you're around a fire, Seraph, you're in for no danger. <sighs> I set her up for that one, didn't I? But Lila, watching your graceful fire dances lit a flame in my heart. I don't know if I can ever put it out. That's why every community needs affordable dousing. Ugh, we keep enabling her. <laughs> You're incredible, Lila. In, In more, more ways, ways than, than one. one. Boom! Done and done! You made it. Yep. Were you worried? Not especially. Ouch! Come on, you could have worried about me a little bit. I just estimated your power and weighed it against that of your enemies. And I was right. Huh. Want to see if your estimates were really correct? Whoa, I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> Probably not. Sorry, I'm still in kill everything mode. I'll switch it off. <laughs> you really are impenetrable sometimes. Hey, quit laughing. Although, you're always such a frowny Freddy. Maybe it's okay once in a while. <laughs> Make up your mind. Boom! Done and done! You've got some skills. I think my heart's melted. Oh, yeah? Viewing fee's a hundred gold. There's a charge? I demand a little more for my money, then. Fine, we'll waive it. Just this once. After all, if I screw up, I got someone I'll have to answer to. You had a guardian angel. Can't let his efforts go to waste. Not had. Have. Really, truly melted. Grunts are just grunts, venomized or not. Take a hike, you monsters. Wear sunscreen. Stay hydrated. I don't get it. That's because you don't know proper hiking safety. You're being weird. That much I get. <laughs> Even if they were grunts, it still must have been tough battling them by yourself. Good job, Edna. It's nothing. Grunts aren't tough by definition. But feel free to maintain your entirely unnecessary concern for me. Uh, yeah. Grunts are just grunts, venomized or not. Take a hike, you monsters. Wear sunscreen. Stay hydrated. If a mountain lion attacks, wave your arms and make noise. Why would a mountain lion attack a hellion? That doesn't make any sense. Youch. <laughs> Even if they were grunts, it still must have been tough battling them by yourself. Good job, Edna. That's nothing. Grunts aren't tough by definition. But feel free to maintain your entirely unnecessary concern for me. Uh, yeah. <sighs> These Hellions are getting stronger and stronger. Well, that's kind of what this place was built for, I guess. Lila, how many crucibles of malevolence are there in total? There are seven confirmed locations, but there may be others as yet undiscovered. And all of them are engaged in this venomization? I don't know. They were supposed to be sealed by a protector seraph named Goth. Goth. If I recall, he serves Hyanawa, one of the five lords. So we may have to assume Heldoth has killed him. We may. We'll be lucky if he only killed him. If Goff's been kept alive and got thrown into a crucible? He'd be a dragon by now. It's just a possibility, but it's Heldolf we're talking about. Phew, we did it. That looked pretty tough. I can't even imagine what would happen if one of these terrors got loose in the outside world. I mean, seriously, what dipstick would even put together something like this? A seraph, presumably. What? 
Why would a seraph possibly want more malevolence in the world? I couldn't begin to tell you, but we know it took powerful seraphic arts to build this. We can only surmise that there was an era in which it made sense somehow. That's about the exact opposite of any world you'd want to be familiar with, isn't it? It is. But I think it's important to acknowledge it. There's no sense in articulating my dreams if I refuse to look at reality. Hmm. You know, it's not just Hellions. These places have made you stronger, too. Really? Really. But you're not the only one. Don't get too full of yourself. Whoa, I'm not! What's going on? Yes, finally, my turn! Saray, this island has a ridiculous concentration of malevolence. And when you factor in that this is a crucible... Yeah, and he'd be alone. Zavid, let's retreat. It's too dangerous. I don't have a problem with leaving. But I do have a problem with the danger being the reason. Think I'm gonna lose, do you? Zavid, Saray's just worried about you. Comes to the same thing. Is that really what's most important, Shepard? <sighs> Saray? Why don't you let him give it a shot? Look at him! He's all pumped! See? The ladies know the score. All right. We'll leave it to you, Zavid. Excellent! Time to shine! Yeah, that was too close! No one told me they'd be that strong! I saw my life flash before my eyes! That's what you get. You reap what you sow. I told you. Don't sweat it. All's well that ends well. <laughs> you heartless ghouls. Good work, Savid. You too. It isn't easy to trust other folks, is it? Nope. But that's my duty. That's right. But hey, don't dwell on it too much. Because I'm not about to let you down. So old man Maven really was dealt a tricky hand in life. Yeah. He was burdened with a special fate. Even so, he never had a problem lending a helping hand to the Sparrow Feathers. And he taught me what it is to be an explorer. He traveled all over the world. Gently guiding us to the right path. Yep. That's the Maven I know. No matter his circumstances, no matter his fate... Maven was just Maven, through and through. Yep. Like how Saray is just Saray. And how Rose is just Rose. Stop copying me. You copied me first. Lila, what did you mean they were trapped by malevolence even in death? Humans and seraphim, in fact all living species, have something within their bodies called a soul. A phantom is the hellion which results when that soul itself is corrupted by malevolence. Then does that mean... Even if we purify them, they won't go back to their human form? Yes. They are already dead. Hmm. <sighs> but if we don't purify them, their souls will retain their malevolence, drifting around aimlessly for all eternity. As hellions who continue to prey on humans, you mean. So purification is still a way to save them, right? It is. Okay. I know what I must do. Lila, you've been acting a little funny. Everything okay? Oh, sorry. I'm quite picky about the way things curl up into a tight ball. The way things curl up? Yes. It was the armadillo seraphim who taught me the true splendor of it. I'm disappointed in the hellion we encountered. Very amateur hour. The armadillo seraphim? I'm kind of not following this. The Armadillo Seraphim, Arma Walt, and Arma Langston. You know, the legendary three-time curling champions. No, I don't know. I'm kind of not at all following this. It was they who told me of the world's greatest curlist, Arma Dillon, who left years ago on a journey to master the curl. What I wouldn't give to see that ultimate curl. It's my dream. Mikaleo, is she okay? Something tells me we should just let this one slide. Yeah. Armadillon, where hast thou gone? You dare call yourself a curless with that form? Utterly preposterous. Whoa! Guys, Lila's freaking out! She's okay. She just... 
has a thing for stuff that curls up into little balls. I know, it's weird. A curlist strives to achieve the perfect sphere. In other words, physical realization of one of nature's ideal forms. Which means a sloppy curl is an insult to Mother Nature. Ah, I think I kind of get it. Like spiral shells and stuff, right? They're cute. Rose! Look out, Rose. You're playing with fire. So you do get it! Wait, what? Particularly the sublime curl of the turban snail. It's pure mathematics. I could gaze at it for hours. Sure, and like, egg rolls are totally yum. Oh, and round steak? Mmm! Yes! Rose, let's start a curlist club. Just you and me. We'll call it the Curling Circle. Yes, and our motto can be, the only thing we have to sphere is sphere itself. We've lost her. I'll quarantine them. You warn the others. Too bad. I know you really wanted to meet Arma Dillon. It's all right. I should have known that he would be extremely difficult to corner. However, I shall not give up on my dream. So long as I seek the perfect curl, I know I will be able to meet him one day. After all, what goes around comes around. That's the spirit. You know, I think this wound up being a pretty nice story after all. Yeah. <sighs> If you ask me, this whole thing spiraled out of control. Phew. It might not have been as strong as a dragon, but you could have fooled me. A dragon? Something bothering you? Yeah, I guess. It felt like that hellion resented us somehow. Really? Just a gut feeling. Huh. I wonder. Hellions are just like that. It's purified now, wherever it is. It's probably feeling great. I hope so. A weapon of Mithril. I can feel its immense power just holding it in my hand. Does seem like a bit of a waste, though. You do realize how much that sells for, right? I think this right here is a better investment. Weapons symbolize the spirit of adventure. <laughs> so you're a real man after all, Sheps. Spirit of adventure? Huh? Was I off? What do you mean, then? Just, this is something we were only able to obtain because we traveled to every corner of the world. So this weapon is one of the answers our journey led us to. Oh, I get it. Ugh, I should have known. You're still an incorrigible choir boy. Huh, <laughs> you should be grateful, Zavid. If he'd been following your example, they'd have chucked all the mithril into the ocean for the good of humanity. Undoubtedly.